stream code quality by bringing testing to patch level. Uh, this presentation was supposed to be delivered by me and also my colleague Lei Yang, but uh, how he, he is unable to join us today, so I will present our work by my own. Uh, first, I'd like to give a brief introduction of us. Uh, we both are the senior software quality engineers from the virtualization QA team, and uh, we have been. Uh, our responsibility is to test uh, KVM virtualization and we have been working on the upstream testing for more than two years. The, uh, this is the today's agenda. Uh, overly, I will introduce why we do this, how we do this. And also, I will share some experience and tips. Uh, and then I will sum up the benefits we get and the challenges we met. Uh, and finally, we will open the floor for questions and discussions. Uh, first, uh, why do we do this? Uh, just in case that uh, I, I like to introduce the downstream bug fix workflow, uh, and to clarify that in the following slides, uh, upstream refers to the commu community edition of the project, and the downstream refers to the enterprise product. Uh, so when a downstream bug is discovered, a testers report the bug, and then it will be assigned to a developer who will analyze the bug, and also he will check if, the bug, if, the, if there is a fix in upstream already, and if there is a fix, if yes, the developer will identify the patch and the backport to downstream. Uh, 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 and uh, if no, the developer will send a patch to upstream first to fix it, and uh, once the patch gets merged in upstream, uh, it will be backported to downstream. After that, our testers would test it to verify the fix is valid or not. If the test passes, then the bug is fixed successfully. But uh, if not, the bug will go back to the developers for another round of uh, analyze and fix. Uh, as basically, that's the general workflow of for most of the downstream bugs, and it brings some pain points. Uh, first of all, testers. It is very common that uh, we could sometimes discover regression bugs. It means that the function works well before in old version packages, and uh, somehow uh, it uh, is not uh, in uh, newer version packages. There must be some uh, patches that are introducing uh, the bug. And uh, to speed up the bug fix process, we we are supposed to run gate by sect and repeating our tests to find out the culprit. Uh, if, if there are lots of patches between the two versions, or if the testing steps are very complex, it costs much time and effort. Especially if the bug is found in a very late phase, uh, it costs much pressure because we need to fix uh, test it and uh, verify that the fix is valid and not introducing any new issues. And uh, for developers, there are also some pain points. Of, uh, as I mentioned before, the, uh, the patches actually could be in the upstream for a long time before it goes to downstream. So to fix a bug, developers may need to revisit the very old patches. And it might be very hard for them to recall all the details because they could have worked on that patch quite a long time ago. And besides, the fix could be invalid, but it's not known until it gets to downstream and being tested. Uh, in that case, another round of uh, sending a patch to upstream, uh, backporting to downstream, and fully testing against it are required. Uh, in addition, there's all uh, there's also a cost of switching context. The developers uh, will have to switch from what they were working on to uh, a very old, might be unrelated work. Yeah, as for downstream structure, there are product, there are also some pain points. Uh, for downstream product, there usually has a very strict release schedule. And if a bug is discovered in a, a Later phase, it could be very risky to release the product on time. 
Uh, first, we need to evaluate, uh, evaluate the severity and the cost and to decide whether we fix it or revert the patch that uh, introduced the issue or just uh, leave it there and uh, defer to the next release to fix, which could be unfriendly to our customers. Given all these pain points, we decided to change our test, test strategy from testing downstream only to spend some time testing upstream patches. And uh, how do we do this? Okay, uh, as I mentioned before, we are a virtualization QE team. Uh, main po components we tested uh, are QMU and the kernel. And uh, QMU is open source user space emulator. It can work with multiple hypervisors. And in Red Hat, we tested it against KVM, which is a kernel module. And uh, yeah, the, 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 the the left side, left column is the upstream name, and the right column is the downstream name in Red Hat. Yeah, we, uh, 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 the first step is uh, we need to identify the patches that we are going to testing. Uh, there are all, uh, for QMU and the kernel, there are mailing lists for them. All the new patches are sent to the mailing list and uh, the review process is conducted via email as well. We'll so we subscribe to the QMU, subscribe to the mailing list to get notified about all the uh, new patches and patch status as well. For QMU, we just need to uh, fill filling out this form on this web website. Uh, basically, only the email address is essential. And for Linux kernel, uh, uh, in, in this link, uh, there are um, many sub, sub projects of the Linux kernel and in this website there are many addresses for each of them as well as the overall Linux kernel addresses and uh, all we need to do is just to send a mail to the address and confirm the subscription uh, as it's it instructed. Once we have picked up the patches we are going to test, uh, the steps following are as below. First, we get the upstream code. Uh, usually, we use the git clone command, we followed by the source code repl URL address. Uh, the, the red picture shows how we get the QMU addresses. Just uh, click the code button, and uh, the addresses will show up there. Uh, next step is we need to download the patches that we are going to test. Uh, usually, we use the b4am command followed by the message ID of the patches. Uh, I will explain that more in the next slide. And then, after download the patches, we need to apply the patches. Uh, usually, a git am command is used, and then we compile the source code. Uh, usually, the compiling steps are described in a readme file of the project, and if you have a make file, just run make then you are free to test with the binary files that are generated in a compiling pro step. Okay, here is an example of downloading patches. Uh, as I mentioned before, their message ID is needed to download the patches. Uh, it can be a get from the patch mail. Uh, just click the three dots of the patch mail and click the show original. A new window with uh, the message ID will show up, pop up, and uh, we can get a message ID there. Then here is the how we run the command, and the output usually looks like this. The patches will be receive, received in, in your disk with the suffix name mbx. Please note that uh, usually uh, a, a series of patches are sent together. Uh, and we are supposed to te test them te together because there could be some dependencies. And um, yeah, and in that case, we don't need to download them one by one. We just need to find the cover letter of the patch series and, uh, and get a message ID of the cover letter and run this command before I am. Now with the message ID, we can download all the patches once in all. So after we have finished the test, uh, we need to report our test results. If the test passes, 
we reply to the patch mail uh, with a brief introduction of our test and the result. Also, we added a test by flag tag followed by the tester's name and the email address. Please note to use the plain text mode when replying to the mail. Otherwise, it could be gumbled in upstream. And uh, once the patch is merged in upstream, uh, the test by tag will be look like this uh, in the gate log. You will see this uh, test by tag in the commit output. On the other hand, uh, the test uh, could be failed. Uh, and uh, we need to confirm if the failure is introduced uh, by the patches we are testing or not. Normally, we need to revert the patches and the retest. If we have confirmed the patch that the failure is introduced by these patches, we, are, we reported the failure to the patch author. And uh, when the patch author sends an another new patch to fix it, we will retest. And uh, yeah, just the repeat process until all the tests pass. And uh, if we confirm that the failure is not introduced by the patch, it means it uh, exists with the upstream code. So in that case, we just report in the upstream backtracking system. And here's the link for QMU and kernel project. Next, I will share our experience and some tips regarding the upstream patch testing. Uh, here is the one that uh, last uh, November, a developer sent a patch series to implementing a new feature in QMU. And uh, we have uh, performed a round of regression testing against it and uh, found a very severe bug. A QMU got call dumped. Uh, call dump is always the high priority for us because once that happens, it could. Uh, the virtual machine got shut down without any warnings. It could cause severe consequences if customers are running some important services in it. Fortunately, we caught that before the patch got, in, got merged into upstream, and uh, the and uh, the developer has uh, fixed it uh, according to the message we provided. Uh, as a result, the issue is not introduced to upstream, that's downstream. Uh, here's uh, another example. Uh, last uh, October, a developer from Oracle sent a patch series to Linux kernel, and uh, he found a bug by himself. And then he sent a, a new patch to fix it. But uh, our test indicates indicated that uh, his patch, his ladder patch actually did fix the bug he found, but also introduced a new one, which caused the kernel panic. So we reported the issue to him, and uh, uh, the finally he had fixed both the bugs without introducing new, new issues with his newer patches. As you can see that sometimes developers would run some testing by, him, by themselves, but the tests from the professional testers are also very valuable. And uh, uh, as I mentioned before, there are some times that uh, the bugs we discovered are not about the patches we are testing, but uh, it's just uh, a bug existing upstream. In that case, we reported the bug to the tracking system as uh, it is shown in this picture, there's a QMU bug and we reported there and uh, the upstream developer would handle it. And uh, now it has been fixed. Apart from discovering bugs, uh, testing upstream patches is also helpful to uh, fix, uh, helpful to downstream bugs. Uh, here is an example that uh, uh, downstream bug, actually their fix uh, was already in upstream for a while, but the developer just forgot to backport to downstream. And uh, as our testers have been tested, 
and uh, check the status. So, so we are able to remind the developer to backport it to downstream. Uh, yeah, and uh, it helps to speed up the bug pro fix process. As we engage more and more in upstream testing, we have built connections with upstream community and also earned the trust of the developers. Uh, the developers now would require tests from us directly, like uh, either for their own patches, like the left one, or the patches from others, like the right one. Uh, the right one is from the Oracle. And uh, they trust our tests and they would like to have them tested before merging, merging the patches. Next, I will share the tips. Uh, the first is about how to know if a patch is merged. It is important because uh, if a patch is merged already, our workflow is no longer applicable because we don't need to download the patches, we don't need to apply the patches, and also the tested beta cannot be added either. There are three ways to check. The first is we can check in the patch work with patch title. The patch work uh, is a website like this one, it's for QMU, and uh, with all the patches listed there, we just search the patch title. If there is a pool uh, in the beginning of the patch, that means the patch has been merged in upstream. Otherwise, it's not. Also, we can check in email because we have subscribed to the mailing list. Also, the way it seems same, just to find out if there's patch with the pool in the beginning. But there's another way is just to check in the upstream code directly. Uh, you just need to download the upstream code. And if you have done that before, just uh, run the git pull command to upload, update your local code to the latest, and then run git log grip patch title. If the pa uh, patch shows there in the git log output, it means it's being merged, otherwise it's not. Another tip is uh, about how to solve code conflict. Uh, when we apply the patches, uh, it might fail due to the code conflict. The arrows looks like this. The patch failed at which patch, something like this. And we are suggested to solve that by add a minus three option to the git am command. It works sometimes, but it's not always. Uh, the always working solution is to manually fix the code conflict uh, according to the, uh, the first uh, GTM show current patch equal diff to see the uh, overall message, detailed uh, message, and we fix that manually and then continue to use GTM to apply. Okay, so next part, I will introduce the benefits we get and also the challenges we met. There are several benefits. Uh, first of all, upstream, because the bugs are discovered and fixed before the patches get merged in upstream. So finally, the, there are less bugs in upstream, so the code quality improves. And for downstream, uh, there are less bugs in upstream, there's less bugs in downstream. So we could be able to release the product on time with less risk. As for developers, uh, yeah, yeah, I mentioned before that the, the quality of their patches actually improve, improves as well because the bugs are found and fixed there. So I think it's good for their reputation. Uh, also, the effort to re fix bugs reduces because once there's a bug in the patch, uh, they would know very soon after we have tested it. And so we don't need to go back the old way to fixing upstream, backporting downstream, and then test. And when the, bug is, when the fix is invalid, another round of this process 
uh, needed. So we just uh, avoid that. Uh, there are also benefits for testers. Uh, as the less bugs in downstream, so the downstream testing effort actually reduces and also the pressures, pressure reduces as well. And also by contributing testing to upstream, uh, we actually build a connection with upstream community and gets to know what's going on upstream, and uh, which is very helpful for our future work. Uh, also, as we add the tags with individuals' names and uh, emails to the upstream patches, uh, the testers' individual visibility increases as well. And we have counted the number that uh, uh, in the last two years, our team, uh, 10 associates in total, have added the tested by tags to 144 patches. And, uh, and also reported by tax to 38 patches. And next, I will share the challenges we met. The first is due to the limited resources, we need to balance the testing between upstream and downstream. Uh, especially at the beginning, uh, though the upstream testing would reduce the downstream testing effort, but it's not very obvious in the beginning, so we may need to uh, spend extra time on the upstream testing. And, the be and besides, also we need some professional technical skills. Because uh, uh, when we test the downstream testing, the packages are built by others, and we just need to install the packages and run the tests against it. But uh, when it comes to upstream, upstream patch testing, we need to do it on our own. We need to uh, download the patch, apply the patch, and uh, compile the source code. The configuration between the upstream and downstream might be not very identical. So there could be some issues, uh, either for the applying patch or, or compiling compiling the source code, and we need to solve that. So I, I, that requires some professional skills. Yeah, uh, that's all for my presentation. Feel free to raise any questions if you have. Yeah, hi. Uh, just a question about, and I think it was on the last slide that you mentioned uh, the frequency. How do you really balance your workload for doing upstream versus your downstream testing? And how often do you do upstream testing? Yeah, actually, it depends on your work workload. Currently, it varies for different testers because we normally test different features for each one, and uh, the bugs and the testing effort, also the changes for the, for the features might be different. So all we need to do is to test uh, testing upstream according to your own situation. Uh, we not force anyone to test in every patch for, from upstream, just uh, uh, when you are available, you are free to test them. Do you run, for example, any regression suites upstream on a regular basis, once a month, every two weeks, anything like that? Mm, I, I don't see uh, it, it's not fixed because, yeah, for downstream, we have uh, like a six months release cycle. So at each month, we might have different workflow for the downstream testing. So yeah, we might have some more time uh, for upstream testing when there's not a very much task in downstream. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Is there any um, motion to try to get some of the developers to do like some of the testing before they push upstream versus what the QE does? Or is that already happening? Or maybe um, have you guys looked into that? Uh, I'm sorry, can you repeat? So, 
do the developers run some of these tests before they push the patch upstream, or is it more of a, they just put the patch upstream and then it's up to uh, the QE to run the test? Yeah, I, I believe for some developers, they would run some tests, but uh, I'm not for sure because, uh, <laughs> yeah, they might run different tests and the test might be different from our QEs, our testers. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I think uh, most of the cases are uh, uh, created by QEs, and uh, um, yeah, I think uh, they were not run the fully testing against it. I mean, they were, they probably won't run all the tests that our testers run usually. 